genetics, reproducing life, genes, structural and regulatory. What makes you you? Although it is true that we all in this classroom are of the same species, it is also true that we all look different. Yes, different. Some of us are taller than others, with lighter or darker skin, and with different eye color. So, how are all of those differences between the same species possible? Well, this is due to two genes, structural genes, which are responsible for body structures such as hair, blood, and other tissues. And second, regulatory genes, which are responsible for turning other genes on and off, the ability that regulatory genes have in being able to turn genes on and off is an essential activity in growth and development. For example, if the genes that determine bonds doesn't turn off at certain point, your bonds would continue to grow and you would eventually become a giant. Another example of this is that chickens have the genes for tooth development, but they don't develop teeth, because those genes are permanently turned off. Also, humans have a genes for total body coverage, but the gene is not turned off completely, however, there are some exceptions. So now that we know that there are genes that determine if a species has hair or not, now let's discuss what can cause hair to be either white or black or for it to grow on the head or on the feet. Well, this is caused by the type of regulatory gene called homeotic or Hox genes. Homeotic genes were discovered in 1983 by Swiss and American researchers. These genes are code to produce proteins that turn on many other genes, in particular those that determine the regions of the body during prenatal development. But what is interesting about this type of regulatory genes is that although they exist in all species, not all species develop their parts in the same way. For example, when observing the eyes of a cat and the eyes of a human, it is obvious that they are not the same, even though they share the same homeotic genes. This is because the location and formation of an organism eye are determined based on the location of the Hox gene on the organism chromosome. Another example of this is the thorax. The Hox gene that is in charge of the formation of the thorax exists in all species, but their location and formation is different for each. For example, in a fly, a mouse, a goose, a snake, and a human, the thorax on each is of a different size and found on a different part of the body. This is because the location of the Hox gene on the chromosome of each of these organisms is also different. Polyformisms, variations in specific genes. Polyformism refers to the presence of two or more alleles at a locus or location, where the frequency of the alleles is greater than 1% in the population. Polyformism creates variation in specific genes, and this is because genes have a specific location on each chromosome and the alleles are also found at the same location. However, what makes alleles different is that they are composed of a different chemical structure. This allows for variation in a genetic trait, and an example of this can be seen in the different blood types that exist. Each person has one of the four blood types, A, B, A, B, or O, and as we can see, it has two or more variants. But how is it determined what blood type an individual will have? This can be answered by using Mendel's law of segregation. The law of segregation declares that the mother and father contribute equally to an offspring genetic makeup. This means that a person with blood type AB will pass on either an A or a B allele to a child but not both. The other allele will come from the other parent. Also, with the Punnett square we can visually see how each parent contributes with one of their alleles and all of the possible options for the creation of their offspring's new gene.